This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to talk about a boogie boogie, and I'm going to play one. I'm Steve Benson. I'm Paul Schultz. And this is the Don't Panic Radio Show. Sit back, relax, and ignore the news. Nothing you're about to hear is true. Now here's something we hope you'll really like. Welcome to the Don't Panic Radio Show. My name is Steve Vincent. That's Paul Schultz. And nothing you're about to hear is true. I almost waved at the camera. Brought to you by Folded Mountains. <laughs> <laughs> Premium brewed pale ale. And by brought to you, he means it's what he's drinking to get us through this. <laughs> if you're not familiar with Folded Mountains, yeah, there is an S. I almost said, is, that, is this one of those... Uh, Mandela effects? It is not. It is. There is an S after the folded mountain. Folded mountains. <laughs> premium brewed pale ale is Aldi flavored beer. What does Aldi taste like? You know, here's what it tastes like. It tastes like beautiful sun drenched hops and inexpensiveness. When I was a kid, my <laughs> my uncle was kind of cheap and... He would bring over a six pack of beer that he got from all these that literally said beer in stencil black letters on a, <laughs> on a white label. Yep. Well, back in the day, like the thing I remember about Aldi mm-hmm. was their commercial uh, later in life where they said Aldi, where prices are low. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, dude, even even the actors are cheap. <laughs> But what I remember about Aldi is everything was generic. Yeah. And by generic, I mean white label, black stencil letters. Mm -hmm. And somehow they got these cashiers who knew the price of every goddamn thing in the (laughs) store by heart. Either that or they just typed in whatever price they could think of at the moment. (laughs) I don't know. But they would just sit there like it just... Like throwing thing into your cart, just yeah. And they were vicious away. about it. They would just chuck that shit, just slide it right off into your cart. Yes, it's like uh, uh, a case of yogurt, <laughs> on a case of pop on top of the yogurt. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember we used to buy canned bacon, mm. and I have not seen the canned bacon at Aldi since I resumed my shopping there. So here's the problem they had: mm-hmm. is when I was a kid, it just equal Aldi equaled not good, but cheap. Right. Mm -hmm. And so you go there and you get your canned goods and, you know, you just whatever canned goods you needed, you get them at Aldi because they're super cheap. Yeah. And we found this canned bacon and we're like, ah, a loophole. (laughs) That's a canned good. (laughs) We can have bacon (laughs) because it's in a can. But then so I grew up and I thought, oh, I'm a grown up now. I have a job. I'm making money. I don't need to go to Aldi anymore. Right. So they had a brand problem. Mm hmm. And what Aldi has brilliantly done in the last couple of years, and I don't know when it started, but they have brilliantly rebranded themselves as not very expensive and smart. Yes. So they've done the organic thing, Mm -hmm. but you don't have to buy the organic stuff. But I hear more and more they're going toward that. They're going to, yeah, eventually it's all supposed to be. One of the more brilliant things they've done is they've made the shopping experience actually a pleasant experience Mm -hmm. if you ever go to trader joe's trader joe's all the owned by the same family yeah the company split at some point kind of like the persian empire yeah the same family but civil war you know whatever but you know you kind of generally they're both persian right Mm -hmm. (laughs) like all the trader joe's so trader joe's is pretty bare bones pretty small supermarket Mm -hmm. it's not even super it's pretty small market it's a market yeah (laughs) there's not a lot of choices uh, just a few, but the experience is is the big thing mm-hmm. with Trader Joe's. It's also the big thing with Aldi. It's almost like an accidental thing that they did. It's not like they set out to say, let's make the experience this. It's just, let's make it inexpensive, 
And to make it inexpensive, we're, we're going to have to just have one or two choices, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And by only having one or two choices, by having small stores and having every store only have three employees. Yeah. And make it and making you put the quarter in to get the cart <laughs> to reduce the cost of like having to send somebody out to collect carts and mm-hmm. like having to buy new carts because homeless people steal your carts and all this stuff. They've created this experience where even the kids get involved and they're like, oh, I have the quarter. I'm going to go get the cart. Yeah. <laughs> My stepson, when he was really little, he like he's sitting in the cart and he's trying to he takes the chain. And he's trying to figure out how to stretch it around. And pop it on the other side mm. to get his quarterback. I'm like, no, no, <laughs> stronger men than you have tried. That quarter thing is funny though, man, because it's like I usually just I'll, I'll get I'll get my cart, I'll go, and then when I come out, I'll just abandon my cart so that somebody can come along and take it. And there's always like an old person. They're waving their quarter, you know, and you push the cart up to them, and they they're, they're handing out the quarter. I'm like, no, 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 keep your quarter, and they're like. Are you sure? Like, uh, if a quarter isn't going to break me. Go go ahead. Keep your quarter. So I have a thought on that. Okay. I know that shocks you that I would have <laughs> thought about this. I blame it on the depression. I just figured back then, you know. <laughs> Here's my thought. If somebody offers you the quarter, you have to take the quarter. For those of you that don't know, for the uninitiated, you go to Aldi and they have this surprisingly simple yet a little bit complicated system <laughs> <laughs> where a quarter is exactly the right size to stick into the cart. And it, it's like this little contraption where if you stick the quarter into it, it's not, there's, there's very, there's no moving parts and you have to actually go to see what I'm talking about. <laughs> There's no moving part. There's not a mechanism. or There is a mechanism, but it's like only mechanism, like like very s- small moving part, right? You stick the quarter in, and it, and it releases the chain so that you can take a cart. Mm-hmm. Now, the quarter stays in your cart. It's your quarter and your cart. Mm-hmm. And so you use your cart. You take your groceries out to your car afterwards. And you take the cart back up so that you can get your quarter back because the only way to get your quarter back is to take the cart back up and put it in the cart corral and then take the little mechanism and stick it into the cart slot and it'll push your quarter back out for you and you get your quarter back. The same quarter that you put in, right? I emphasize this point because I'm 50 damn years old and it took me a while to figure out, oh yeah, I'm getting my quarter back. The same quarter that I put in here to get the cart. Because for a while I was like, oh, there's 25 carts here. That's 25 quarters. Why doesn't somebody just come up and steal all the quarters out of these carts? And I was like, wait a minute. (laughs) There's only a quarter in the cart that you have. Like there's not quarters in all the carts. Just Anyway, so once you do it, you'll see if you're uninitiated. So sometimes what will happen is you have your cart. You take your cart back up to the. I'm going. I'm going to go through cart <laughs> etiquette here. So I think this is important. I don't think enough educational podcasts have been done about <laughs> cart etiquette at Aldi. So you take your cart back up to to stick the little mechanism. The little it's shaped like a putty knife, almost like a weird. It's not quite a putty. Anyway, so you stick the putty knife sort of shaped thing, the weird shaped thing, back into your cart, and it pushes your quarter back out. And you get your quarter. You retrieve your quarter, and it locks the cart back into the cart corral. Sometimes, as you're pushing your cart back up there, there will be somebody walking up at the same. And you gotta, you can kind of see, <laughs> like as you're pushing the cart back up, you can kind of see somebody yeah. coming from their car as you're pushing up. And you're like, oh yeah, that person. We're gonna time it just about right. <laughs> like, you don't wait for people. It's true. It's totally you don't true. Wait for people. The timing has to be. <laughs> the timing has you to be. You slow right. down a little like, bit. You know, it's not like. Yeah, it's it's not like I'm going to get up there and then wait because I see somebody just parked, like and they're getting out of their car and get situated, getting their getting their Aldi bags situated. Like, no, I'm not going to wait for them. It's like only if the timing works out, right? We both get there at approximately the same time. I will offer mm-hmm. them mm-hmm. my cart, right? I'm like, here's a cart. 
Because I'm not going to push the cart into the corral, push my quarter back out, and then be like, here, now you can get the cart, right? Now you got to put your quarter in and get the cart. No, it'll be like, oh, well, here's a cart. You don't have to go through the through the rigmarole of, of get the thing. But that's part of the ritual because that person now has a quarter. Mm-hmm. They brought their quarter with them mm-hmm. to get their cart, right? So now they have a quarter to get the cart. Now, it's through <laughs> trial and error. I have figured out the proper etiquette and the proper approach here. If the person has a quarter in their hand, ready to hand it to you, and you go, here's a cart, and they're like, here's the quarter, you take the quarter. Otherwise, you're going to get in this whole awkward, like, oh, no, it's okay. Oh, no, I have my quarter. And then you're like, no, no, it's fine. You, you keep the quarter. No, but I have my quarter. Because it's not about the quarter. It's about the ritual. Because they're going to come out. So now they got their quarter. And they're like, oh, here's a quarter that Paul wouldn't take from me. Uh, All right. Awkward. Put it back in my pocket or purse or behind my ear, whatever you do with the quarter. And you get your cart. And when you come back out, if their timing doesn't work out, that they can give that cart to somebody else, now they have an extra quarter. Now they've got two quarters, one of which they didn't earn. (laughs) And they're like, now what? Okay. Here's a situation, though, where you don't have to take the quarter. If they don't already have the quarter, right, and they haven't thought to get their quarter out, and you're pushing the cart up, and the timing works out, and you're like, need a cart? And they're like, yeah. And then they start to go into their pocket, or they start to go into their purse, right? And you go, don't worry about it. That's the same guy who, like, if you all go out to eat, He's like, he does the lean, you know, but he's not really going to, like, get his wallet out. He's waiting for you to go, oh, no, I got this. So I think people go to Aldi without a quarter. Yes, I agree. And it's like, because they don't, if I just if I, if I just linger long enough oh, oh. and if I can match my time with that guy, he's going to, like, and then he's going to go, like, oh, no, 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 keep keep your quarter. Pay it, pay it forward. Pay it, I, I hear that a lot. Pay it forward. So that's what I was going to say. That was my next uh, to ca- to combat those people mm-hmm. that you're not sure. Sh- you think maybe they did it on purpose. Like, oh, there's a guy. I'm not going to get my quarter out because I know that the etiquette is he'll take my quarter if I offer it. <laughs> but if I don't have the quarter ready, he's going to follow the Vincent etiquette approach. <laughs> and he's going to say, don't worry about it. Right. You combat that by saying pay it forward. So when they go, oh, let me give you a quarter. You go, you know what? Don't worry about it. Pay it forward. Pay it forward is a powerful statement. Because when they come out with that cart, which has your quarter in it, they're going to resist taking that quarter back. They're going to look for somebody to give that cart to. They will wait. They'll wait for somebody. You know, they'll be like, oh, there's somebody that's just now parking. I'm going to wait for them to get their Aldi bags out and walk up here. I'm going to give them this cart because I I don't deserve that quarter. That's not my quarter. I'm going to pay it forward. <laughs> I'm going to tell them to pay it forward. Next thing you know, the same quarter is being paid forward for who knows how long. That having been said, if I were an enter- enterprising youth, <laughs> I would do exactly what you just said. And I would... I would see how many quarters I could make by just, I would sit like near a car and I would watch somebody come out, put their groceries in their car. And I would then like time it so that I could walk up to the Aldi and try to get there exactly as they were pushing their cart up. Right. And I would start reaching into my pocket (laughs) and then they go, Oh, don't worry about it. I'd be like, Oh, are you sure? And they'd go pay it forward. And I'd go, Oh, Okay. And I'd take the cart, walk into the Aldi, turn around, make sure they, you know, got their car and left, walk back out, stick the thing in, get the quarter out, stick it in my pocket, wait for the next sucker. And, and I would see how many quarters I could collect. Two, two things. <laughs> One, my little brother used to do that in the mall back in the 90s. He, he'd go up to people and say, hey, man, i got to make a phone call. I don't have any change. Oh, sure, here, kid. <laughs> and they'd give him a quarter. And by the time he would get from one side of the mall to the other, he'd have like nine dollars and quarters. See, that's different. That's totally different. That's completely unethical. 
And, well, this is my little brother. The one thing I did, though, I was where, where I, used, I used to work at this restaurant that was a couple blocks down the road, and between my house and the restaurant is our local Aldi. That would be the Western Inn. Y- yes. I, I went to work. It, it was fine. We got a, a blizzard hit while I was working. And I used to work second shift, and it's like 10, 30, 11 o'clock. And I'm walking through the Aldi parking lot, and in like a foot and a half of snow, and there's like just nothing but carts. People just said, fuck it. I'm just taking my groceries and going home because I got the bread and milk. Now I'm going home. I don't care about that quarter. So I'm like, well, I'm no dummy. And <laughs> so I made like 250 that night. <laughs> 250 and you know what? You earned that two fifty. <laughs> you, you're damn right. I did push. You ever push a cart in a foot and a half of snow? That's right. <laughs> I began to think maybe this isn't worth it. It started out as a good idea. <laughs> about a dollar in, I'm like, I'm getting my workout tonight. <laughs> so the thing about Aldi, as I mentioned earlier, very few choices when you get in there, but they have everything you need. Here's the thing: do not equate few choices with won't have what you need. There have been studies. And these are this is psychological science right here. This is just science, right? That shows if you're given too many choices, you can't really make a choice. And they've done these studies that show mm-hmm. you you just won't make a choice, even if you stand to benefit from just mm-hmm. picking anything. Just pick any of them. It doesn't matter which one you pick. The more choices you're given, the less likely you are to actually make a choice, right? Yeah, that's happened to me before. And. They've measured blood pressure. They've measured, you know, they measured your stress level. Your stress level goes up when you're given more choices. Like you think, oh, more choices is good, right? Walk down the cereal aisle with your kids. <laughs> tell me more choices is good, right? Until you get to Aldi. There's one kind of Cheerios. There's one kind of fruity, sugary Cheerios. There's one kind of flaky, corny <laughs> thing and the cornflake thing. And there's one kind of... You know, there's one kind of everything. Once in a while, they'll put like, oh, we'll also offer the name brand for the regular price. And that's when you get to see that you can buy the Berman's <laughs> mustard, right? Which is, what's mu- yeah. mustard's mustard? Yeah. I mean, come on. You can buy the Berman's mustard for like yeah. 89 cents for, for a half a gallon, right? It's good stuff, dude. It's in my fridge right now. It's good mustard. Or that sometimes they'll... Mm. Sometimes they'll put the French's out next to the Bermans just to show you yeah. that it's three eighty nine for like a quart instead of a half gallon, right? And then you're like, damn, I'm saving money at Aldi. That's brilliant right there. But anyway, they don't give you a lot of choices. So you're like, you want like, and then you learn what you like and what you don't like. Like the Worcestershire sauce, the Berman stuff, <laughs> no good. Don't I don't like that. I don't get that. Don't get the Worcestershire sauce. But like most of the stuff is good. You figure out what you like, what you don't like. You walk in there, and they have the, – my only complaint is they don't have the right number of aisles. I think it's like five aisles. That sounds right. problem is you walk in, and at the entrance, mm-hmm. you go down, right? There's only one way to go. You go down the first aisle. You come back up the next aisle, mm-hmm. right? Then you turn. You go back up mm-hmm. the next aisle. Then you come down. You turn, yeah, you come yo, down I, I know aisle. where this is going. <laughs> and, then, and then you go up the aisle. And that's yeah. it. You're out of aisles and you're in the back <laughs> of the store, right? Now, maybe they did that on purpose because there's like, okay, well, now yep. you got to walk. Now you get a bonus aisle. You got to go mm-hmm. back to another aisle where you decided not to buy anything. Maybe you'll I buy feel, something. I, I'm, I'm I, like a, I feel like a salmon. I get to that last aisle and it's like everybody's standing in line. I got to go to the end of the line and then turn back around. It's like. <laughs> <laughs> there's, this, there's, this big, there's a big crowd of people in the back corner. Like just a big <laughs> mass of people. Like we don't know where to go next. <laughs> Does anybody know where to go next? <laughs> so anyway, if you forgot something, like you're like, like you're headed toward the checkout, and you're like, ah, we were gonna get chips. It's like, oh, no problem. Get in line. Yeah, I'll go get the chips. It's less yeah. than fifty steps away. <laughs> yep. You know, and. uh the vegetables are good. Like they have good good selection of vegetables. The only thing that bothers me about the vegetables is I want an onion. I don't want ten onions. <laughs> <laughs> ah, the Costco problem. But it's just but like, but it is only onions. Because I always want a uh, dozen potatoes. 
I always want as many tomatoes as I can get my hands on. Broccoli I can't get enough of, but I want mm. one onion. I don't want ten yeah. onions. So so well, then I go, well, who who can I who can I give the rest of these onions to? Because this these ten onions cost as much as the one onion somewhere else. <laughs> At the Kroger's. That's correct. Now I would give you if we live closer, man, I would give you an onion. Because, you know, I buy I buy the pack. I have a big I have a big bag of onions in my pantry right mm. now. It's funny because I have I have a big bag of onions mm-hmm. in the pantry. I also have in in my spice drawer. I have onion powder, and I have uh, minced onions, mm. dried minced onions in the spice drawer. Mm-hmm. So when I make something, I'm like. I feel bad if I have onions left in the pantry. I feel bad using the onion powder or the minced onion, the dried, dehydrated minced onion. As the good ones are like, we're over here. We yeah. taste better. Like, like, I'm right here. You know, I, 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 was, at, I was at Aldi's the other day, and uh, I said Aldi's. I was at Aldi the other day, and I'm going I through like the that. We have a there, there's a, a a frozen bin, you know, in roughly the center of the store where that has. Stuff yep. that they don't always have it, yeah. and I was looking for something to do different. And I'm like, okay, I I I love shrimp. Well, they had this frozen shrimp taco kit, and I'm thinking, how have I made it to 51 years old without having a shrimp taco? So I bought some. Oh, all right, it's like a, I thought, I well, I, yeah. I read the box in the back, and I'm like, all right, oh, this is reasonable stuff you can get. Anywhere, you know, it's peppers and shrimp and onion and blah, 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 and taco seasoning. So then, all right, I'll get it. And it was a little dicey for, uh, it ended up being three small tacos for like five bucks. Shells not included. I went back the next day, <laughs> bought a couple more because I'm like, mm. I'm the only one in, in my family that eats shrimp. So I can't see cooking a, a shit ton of shrimp to make shrimp taco because then I would eat all of the shrimp taco and that's not good for anybody <laughs> yeah i know it's it, a lot of creativity happens when you combine two things like tacos and shrimp shrimp taco well there you go well i only just i only just like five years ago started eating fish tacos which still sounds dirty to me but they're delicious well i have two families to thank for our discovery of aldi mm. one is the jason family of uh, northern virginia Uh, Arlington, Virginia. They live in uh, Falls Church, I believe, Virginia, near near Washington, Mm D.C. Seth and and Jen, we we love them dearly, and went out to visit them. And that you know they were working. We were out there for a funeral, and they were working. So we're like, oh, we'll go see the sights. And we said, hey, we'll pick up something for dinner tonight because they didn't want to go out. They had to work the next day, right? Mm Mm-hmm. They're like, well, there's an Aldi right up the street. We're like, oh, we're not used to Aldi. What do we get there? We don't know. And they're like, oh, just go get, pick up this. And they told us what to get, right? Mm-hmm. We're like, okay, they they we'll probably knew which part of the aisle and which aisle to find yeah, it in. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So we got we got that, and we're, like while we were there, got like 15 other things because they had gotten folded mountain. Yeah, folded mountains. And I was like, that's good beer. I'm gonna get some more of that. So I got some more of that. And anyway, so we went to the Aldi's. In uh, Falls Church, Virginia. The other family we have to thank uh, for helping us discover Aldi is the Donaldsons of um, the the family that bought our house uh, from us. The lawyer. <laughs> the super, Once again, I know where this is going. <laughs> the the mega rich family, you know, that has more money, than, <laughs> like one of the richest families in Indiana, that bought our house. From us and then turned around and sued us mm. for bullshit reasons uh caused us to spend a bunch of our money and realize how actually on the edge we were living and how we needed to learn how to live more frugally and so aldi is a great way to live frugally and so if it were for that family i'm not sure we would uh we would have uh, discovered that that way of living so thank you to the Donaldsons, <laughs> dickheads that they are <laughs> thank you <laughs> <laughs> thank you dickheads <laughs> now they're going to sue me for calling them dickheads because <laughs> they listen to the show. <laughs> hey, did you have any anything else to add to any of that? I need to start. I, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna make a list of things to say, 
And then when you ask me that question, I'm just going to randomly choose one so that I, I have a parting shot. Well, in that case, for Theo Albrecht and for Carl Albrecht and for Paul Schultz, I'm Steve Vinson, and nothing you just heard was true, was true, was true. That's what we keep inside our heads. That's what we keep inside our heads. Sometimes, Mouse, you think you know people and then you don't. Then you wonder, have I met them before? But it doesn't matter. You're just information. That's what we keep inside our heads.